One of the most exciting parts about doing videos for YouTube about ham radio gear would be when manufacturers or distributors reach out and say, we really like what you're doing. We like how you investigate, analyze, utilize equipment, talk about use case, and you share it with your subscribers so they can make informed decisions. We like the quality of what you're doing. We would like you to take a look at our product. And normally that's product that's already on the market. It's been introduced. It's on somebody's website. I wake up almost every morning to emails in my inbox making such requests, and only a few of those get accepted by me because they're really gear that I want to talk about. In the case of what you see here today, or the topic of today, is something that Chameleon Antenna reached out and said, this is something new for us at Chameleon. We're in a partnership. We're collaborating with one of the premier manufacturers of tuners, and they're going to be manufacturing something to our specs specifications, would you take a look at it? So what I have here is a prototype unit from Chameleon Antenna. You better believe I wanted to take a look at it. Let's talk use case on this tuner. I'll then show you how to set it up here in the shack with just a brief explanation of the various ports. And then I'll show you set up outside. This can get mounted onto a wall or it can mount on a mast. It's a remote tuner. And this thing I'm telling you, this is machined billet. It is unbelievably well-constructed. It's waterproof, durable. But what's the use case? We buy these awesome radios like the FX4CR that fit in the palm of our hand, but they come with some level of sacrifice. There is no internal tuner. And so while I use resonant antennas while I'm on the go, on the road at POTA with this, what do I do when I'm in the shack and I want to play with my 20-watt radio? I want to see if I can make a 5-watt contact and how far I can do that. What do I do with the fact that at any point in time, my QTH, I have any number of non-resonant antennas set up in the backyard. What am I going to do? I'm not going to break down my shack set up with my main radio, but boy, if I had something like this, I could run all of these radios constantly by using this gear here. Let me quickly explain how it works. But first, the specs. 120 watts single sideband with a surge to 150, 30 watts digital. And let me say right now, this is prototype. So I'm talking about specs in a prototype unit. Of course, the finished unit, once it's introduced, will have instructions and very clearly talk about the specifications. You can tune in typically a half a second, maybe to a maximum of five seconds. All of my tunes happen much less than five seconds. But with 16,000 memories in this system, when you go to retune near a frequency that it can remember, it's less than half of a second of a tune. You're going to tune with half a watt up to 20 watts. And here's the magic of this. This will work with any radio, any transceiver, this will work because there's no control cable coming from your radio to tell the tuner what to do. Here's the magic. This bias T coupler unit stays in the shack and one of the cables from the back is going to your radio, to your transmitter, and the other is going to your tuner. Can you read upside down? Let's get it this way. This is going to the tuner, which will be outside. This is going to my transmitter, my transceiver. So I'm going to be running this cable to my FX for CR. And then this other cable is going out to this unit, which is located outside and is going to connect here. Now again, check your instructions that have come with your unit once this is available for sale and confirm that nothing changed between these two feeds. Right now, this feed here connects to the bias T coupler. This feed could go to your antenna. And again, here's the magic of this. I'll demonstrate this. You'll see this run here in the shack using my FX4CR. Once you have this out on the wall of your house, or you have this on a mast, you can do a couple of different things. You can run a wire directly to the top beehive connector here. And whether it's an end-fed, long wire, whatever you want to run, you run your wire here to a tree, to a mast, whatever attachment point you want somewhere on your home, and this cable is then going back to your coupler in the shack and you're tuning here and it's sending a signal over the coax to the tuner to tune.
and it's tuning your long wire. Well, let's say you don't want to use a long wire and you want to set up backyard portable with your Cha Hybrid Mini. You want to use the Cha MPAS 2.0 vertical. You want to use any one of many antenna systems that are not resonant. You want to use a Cha Tactical Delta Loop. No matter what antenna system you want to use, you're connecting that coax from that antenna here. So this is going to your controller in the shack. This is going to your antenna system set up backyard portable. So this can be permanently mounted on a mast. It can be permanently mounted on the side of your home. It can be temporarily mounted. Let me show you how simple this is. You're going to be taking your coax from your transceiver, running it into the backside of the bias T coupler where it is marked that your transceiver would connect. And then this is going to the tuner. So this coax comes and feeds to the input on the tuner, which is going to be outside. Again, check your instructions that come with your new unit once this is available for sale, just to make sure which port is which. But right now, the way this one works, this is going to the coupler. And then you're only utilizing this if you have another antenna outside that requires a coax feed, i.e. the Cha Empass 2.0 vertical, or a wire going to a Cha Hybrid Mini, which is how I was running this when I was doing much of my testing. I also then disconnected this and I ran a wire directly to the top of this Beehive connector and ran that long wire to the top of my Cha portable. Mast. So you can run wire antennas directly to this tuner, or you can run any antenna system via coax to the bottom side of the external outside tuner system. The transceiver that I have so much fun with is no longer relegated to parks on the air soda or just taking it portable with me with a resonant antenna or a resonant antenna in the backyard that I have to get up from the shack and go tune, regardless of what antenna that is. Now with a multi-banded or a broad-banded antenna set up in the backyard, I can run this up and down the various bands and make constant contacts without losing time or getting sweaty in the August heat here in Tampa Bay, Florida. Perhaps your use case would be your main shack setup, and certainly this can support that type of setup no problem. For me, my primary use and the thing that excites me about this is now all these tiny radios that I so enjoy portable, I can enjoy from my shack. I can shoot for a one watt, half watt, 5 watt, 10 watt, 20 watt QSO with anybody around the world on 10, 12, 15, 20, 40, not a problem because now I can go up and down the bands and tune right here from the comfort of the QTH shack. While I go through the process of drawing undue attention to myself here in the HOA, let me round out the spec information on this tuner. The frequency coverage is six meters through 160. Of course, my FX4CR can't go up to uh, 160, so that's why I didn't talk much about that. And the power supply expectation is 13.8 volts, which puts it right in line with all of our ham gear currently in the shack. Tuning this up is simple. We just go into FM mode, put a couple of watts through our system, push the tune button on the coupler unit, and within a matter of seconds, we are resonant on the frequency that we want to operate on. Switch to FM, send a couple watts downstream and press the tuning button, and in a matter of seconds, you're resonant on your frequency. Let's get some contacts. Sugar 5-1, David X-Ray, always a good contact. Sugar 5-1, David X-Ray. Kilo, Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Bravo Mike Golf, Bravo Mike Golf, 59, Tampa, Florida. Mike Golf, Roger, Roger, thanks a lot for the report. Uh, all the band from Slovenia, thank you, Bob. Bye bye. Bye bye, 73. Goodbye, Sugar 51, David Extra. Uh, KPPS Kitty Alpha, Sierra Coda from Alpha Shirley 4, Hotel India. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo Mike Golf. Thanks for the parks. I have you 5656 Tampa, Florida. Hey, thank you very much. 
As I've mentioned, I'm working with a prototype unit. So once this finally goes for sale on the Chameleon website and you choose to use it as your main tuning system in the shack, or you get more specific to my use case and you choose to use it with all of your QRP type radios in the shack on broadbanded antennas, be sure to read through all the instructions just in case something changed from the prototype unit that I'm using to the final production units and some of those feed line locations might have altered from what I've demonstrated. So read the instructions. What you're seeing from me is a good general indication of how this is going to operate. Hope you found this useful. Talk to you soon, friend. 73.